It's round seven of the FIDE Candidates Tournament and we have the big clash between Hikaru Nakamura and Jan Nepomnici. Well, Jan Nepomnici is in the shared lead together with Gukesh. They are both on four out of six. And Hikaru, after losing in round two, he's back to 50%. He won a very important game against uh, Alireza Firusha. He's on three out of six, one point behind. And this is a big opportunity for him to catch up with uh, one of the tournament uh, leaders. He will try to play for a win. If it's gonna work out, we will find out in this uh, video. I just kindly ask you to subscribe to the channel. If you like my videos, let me know also in the comments if you want to see other games uh, covered of the candidates tournament. I'm trying to cover most of the exciting things um, I'm coming across, but if you see something I haven't covered yet, please let me know. Here we go, the game. It is Hikaru playing with white, playing one E4. And uh, Napo played uh, the move E5, knight of three, knight of six. He's playing his favorite Russian Petrov defense. Knight takes E5, black goes for the move D6, knight of three, knight takes E4. And um, after D4, we go for the move uh, D5, bishop to D3, bishop D6. This is Napo's pet system. Both sides are castling. And after the move C4, black defends the pawn on d5 with the move c6 and here followers of the channel know already that Pragnananda had this very spectacular game two days ago against uh, Nepo in which uh, Prag went for the move knight c3 completely out prepared the Russian uh, grandmaster and uh, missed a very good chance to uh, to win the game in this uh, game Hikaru um, also came very well prepared. He went for the move Rook to E1, which uh, is the move which was uh, played also by Magnus Carlsen in his uh, World Championship match with uh, Napo. Black goes for the move Bishop F5 to defend the Knight, developing the Bishop. Well-known theory. And here the Queen goes to B3 to attack the pawn on um, B7. And Black defends it here with the move Queen D7, which... Um, it's a, it's okay move. You're defending the pawn, of course. It's just that the knight on b8 has some issues uh, later on to uh, to get into the game. White played here the move c5, attacking the bishop, and the bishop it wants to stay actively on this uh, diagonal, nicely placed on uh, c7. One of the main ideas being that the pawn on b7 cannot be captured because of bishop takes h2 with check and the queen uh, is lost on b7. So. Instead of taking the pawn, White uh, comes up with a very interesting move because, um, I mean, we know that Napo uh, plays this line quite frequently. He even played it earlier this year in uh, Wijk aan Zee against Marsodl. Marsodl played here the move knight c3. Interesting move, but he didn't really get much out of the opening. But here uh, Nakamura goes for the move g3. So he wants to take away the pressure against the pawn on... Um, on h2, but at the same time, of course, it's a small concession, slightly weakening your kingside uh, formation. And black also blitzed out the following move, a5. Very interesting idea. The point is that if you do take the pawn now, black can play here knight a6, which is a great idea. If you take on a6, there is rook fb8, and uh, black will regain the material. The queen on b7 is trapped. Line continues even there, but this is certainly not what you want to do as um, as white. Also, instead of taking the knight on a6, if you decide to go back with the queen to b3, saying that you're a pawn up, black will play rook a b8 to hit the queen. And after queen to d1, the knight comes into b4. And for just one pawn, black is having tremendous play, intending to take on d3 with ideas to set up an uh, attack against the queen on d3 later on and uh, well if you decide to keep the bishop here on the board with uh, bishop f1 it's knight takes f2 typical tactic if you take it and after knight c2 the rook on a1 is uh, trapped as you can uh, can see so anyway you should not take the pawn on uh, b7 yet that's also not what uh, hikaru did he just played knight bd2 putting pressure against that knight on uh, e4 and you don't really want to trade off uh, these pieces. If you uh, play here the move knight takes d2, 
Then, well, queens are coming off and white has a very simple plan uh, to double rooks on the e-file with a very pleasant space advantage. And maybe later on that pawn on a5 is vulnerable. So instead of taking, black play the best move, bishop to e6. Now taking on e4, d takes e4, it just really helps black. It sets up an attack against the queen, against the bishop. There are still some, uh, some tactical lines, but black is more than fine there. So... Instead of taking on e4, Hikaru goes for queen takes b7. Now, it is possible, but look what happens. The rook on a8 is under threat, and you may think that white has made a serious mistake, but this is um, very, very interesting. Knight takes f2 is uh, the game's continuation. Also, it's clear that both sides, they are still in their preparation. As king takes f2, runs into bishop takes g3 with a discovered check. Once again, black is winning the queen. So don't do that. Also, taking the rook on a8 is not very attractive. It runs into knight takes d3 with great prospect. So what white is doing now, instead of taking the rook, he first captures that pawn on h7. Very useful pawn. After king takes h7, only now the rook in the corner is uh, is taken. And, um, well, uh, it's not only a pawn, also the king is on a somewhat inferior square, as we will uh, discover soon. But black played here the move knight to h3, check. King goes to g2. And black played here the move bishop to g4. This is a good spot for the bishop. And where is black's compensation? Because black is an exchange and a pawn down. However, um, the queen on a8, it's really badly placed. So what white really needs to do here is to uh, try to bring the queen back. So queen went back to b7. And after rook e8, well, black is trying to trade off this... Um, rook on e1 because if you do take on e8 it's queen takes e8 and on the next move the queen will either enter on e2 with check or on e3 with devastating threats against uh, the white king so you can see from these lines that uh, not only the queen on b7 is uh, still out of play also the connection between your two rooks is uh, broken and uh, therefore, okay, white has to be very careful not to run into some dangerous attack. Here, Hikaru played the move queen to b3. That's a good move because after rook takes e1, knight takes e1, queen goes to e6 to hit the knight on e1. White played the move queen d3, check. And here we have a very important moment because black obviously needs to solve the check first. But how to do that? I think Napo played a very logical move by dropping back with the bishop to f5. However, this is a very serious um, inaccurate uh, decision here by, uh, by uh, the Russian player, as instead he should have gone here for this move king g8. The king is much safer on this uh, square. The queen still hitting the knight on e1. And one of the main ideas of this move is that now, for instance, if white would play knight d f3, it's not only to connect your knights, but also to cover uh, some squares. The bishop can be developed soon. But in that case, bishop to f5 is a really good move. And now if white would offer the exchange of queens, the bishop comes in to e4. And well, as you can see, the, the knight on f3 is pinned. The knight on e1 can barely move. And black has quite some nice compensation here with ideas to get a knight involved, to put a queen on f5. And um, well, it's very difficult to, to entangle as, as white. However, by playing the move bishop f5 immediately, black is trying to play for the initiative by attacking the queen on d3. However, the key move here is to drop back with the queen to f1. You're defending your knight on e1. Here the move bishop, sorry, knight to d7 is, uh, is played. So black is trying to bring the remaining piece into play. And white still has quite a bit of uh, some issues here regarding its uh, peace coordination. You would love to play something like knight df3 so that the bishop from c1 can join play, but that runs into this move bishop to e4. And once again, I think um, you have some uh, difficulties to activate your, your knight. So instead of knight df3, 
Nakamura played very precisely the move knight from e1 to f3. So the knight is doing okay now, and also the knight on d2, it's covering the e4 square. Black play the move knight f6, so bringing that uh, knight into the attack, and now white's follow up. Here is the move knight to g1. Great idea, you want to get rid of that annoying piece, that knight on h3. It's maybe not threatening that much, but it's taking away squares from the white king. So here we have another very interesting moment because I was analyzing this position a bit. And one of the ideas for white is that, for instance, if you do take on g1, you would like to take back with your king so there is no bishop h3 with check. And if black would play here, bishop to h3 anyway, now white has to be careful. Don't play something like queen f2. It will run into the move queen to g4 with huge threat of queen d1. And otherwise, if you interfere with your knight, for instance, knight to, um, to um, f3, there is knight to e4 attacking the queen. And after the queen goes away, there are even sacrificial ideas on g3. Here, you can feel the absence of the other pieces on the queen side. So don't play that move queen f2, but I'm pretty sure that if this position would have come on the board, then white would have gone here for the move knight f3 instead of moving the queen. The point is that if you take on f1, it's knight to g5 with check. And you can see that the king, this is the main reason why the king is so badly placed on uh, h7. After king g8, you take on e6, fe6, king takes f1, white is an exchange up and um, doing um, a great job. We'll probably win the game very soon. But okay, in, in, in a case like this, bishop takes f1 is, uh, is a bad move. Maybe the knight can come in to, to e4, but then we have ideas to go queen d3 to pin that knight anyway, probably play bishop e3 very soon. The, the rook can come into the game. White is an exchange up and has good chances of converting it. But back to the game. Instead of taking on g1, which is a, probably just a good position for, uh, for white, Napo went here for the move king to g8. So he played that move anyway. But now, very important moment as Nakamura is almost an hour up on the clock. And for his next move, he spent only two minutes. And I'm not saying that he should have fought longer, but I'm pretty sure that um, he was still um, realizing that he's, it's part of his preparation. He may not have remembered all the lines, but certainly this is something he must have seen at some point. He played here the move queen e2, offering the exchange of queens. But in hindsight, it is much better to play the move knight d2 f3 so that you're trying to get your bishop into the game. I really think this is a nice move and you have ideas even to play something like knight g5 and offer the exchange of uh, knights very soon, especially if black would take on g1 rather than taking back. I would love to start with knight g5 to attack the queen. I'm covering the e4 square and after queen e2 with the idea that if queens are coming off the board, the knight will still escape. However, much better for white is just to take on g1. Everything is under control. There are no mating threats and uh, white is still an exchange up and more and more pieces coming off the board. That would be really good news. What went wrong with Naka after knight df3? I guess that he was thinking that knight e4 is an unpleasant move to, uh, to face. And true, it, it is not easy at all. But I think after something like a4, there are good ideas here to activate the rook and get the uh, rook via the third rank into defense. Sometimes uh, you're defending the pawn on g3, but sometimes there are also plans of trying to enter via the b-file. Very complicated lines, but I'm pretty sure this is something White must have seen in his preparation. However, in the game, Naka played the move queen e2 and Jan Nepomnici relieved to play here the move knight to e4. And that is a great move because if you do take that uh, powerful knight on e4, then black will take back with the bishop and the king is in, uh, is in trouble. If you uh, play something like knight f3, then the queen will come to f5 and there's no way to get out of that pin. If the king moves, the, the, the knight on f3 will be taken. And black has a very simple plan to play g5 and g4 and uh, will probably win the knight on f3 at some point. So 
you can't take on e4. But what should you play in uh, instead then? Well, there are a lot of possibilities, but in all these lines, it looks as if uh, you are in, uh, in good shape. For instance, if you take on h3, there is bishop takes h3 with check. King can go back to, to g1, but now bishop to g4 is a, is a good move to attack the queen. And after the, the queen goes away, you have the possibility to take on c5. It's a nice idea because after knight take, sorry, queen takes e6, knight takes e6, well, you have this endgame in which you are an exchange down, but the pawn on uh, d4 is in, uh, is in trouble. And if you would defend it, well, there is something like a4 and uh, the lines are even continuing. If you take on c5 followed by bishop e5, there, there's this threat to go uh, a3 and make use of that pin. And after playing a3 yourself, there's bishop d4 followed by bishop takes c5. And black has enough compensation with the bishop pair and winning one pawn for the, uh, for the exchange. So... Not sure what White should do. What I know is that Hikaru played here this move a4 anyway. So he was familiar with his plan of activating the rook via the third rank. And maybe he was thinking that uh, he's still in good shape, even though it took him a lot of time. I think he spent around half an hour to work out the consequences of this move. But now, Jan Nepomnici, he is on fire. He knows that all his pieces are optimally placed and... They are very close to the White King. So you cannot improve them any further. It's time to strike now. As long as these pieces are out of play, you do have enough chances against the White King. So look at this. Now, big moment. Bishop takes g3. Was played. Fantastic shot. Opening up that uh, position in front of the White King. Now, if White plays anything, there's always something like knight f4 with the fork against the king and the queen so the bishop got to be taken and now knight f4 played anyway forking the queen and king g takes f4 queen g6 check and where should the king go if you go to f3 it's checkmate on g3 don't do that but if you go to h1 well it's knight to g3 you're forking again the king and the queen. So that's also not going to work. Therefore, well, white decided to go away with the king to a safer part of the board. King to f1. Knight g3 is played. So here we see black is going to regain material. The king goes to e1. Knight takes e2. Knight takes e2. So we have finally a somewhat calmer position. No more captures right now. And white is having a rook. A bishop and a knight for the queen. So materially speaking, that should be good. If white gets the chance to consolidate its position, white is probably just much better. However, the queen is really a good piece if it has the opportunity to look for tactical opportunities against the uh, white king. So here, Napo played the move bishop g4. Not only attacking the knight, but also setting up threats like, for instance, queen e6, pinning the knight and uh, tr trying to deliver checkmate. So here, white played the move rook to, um, to a3, which is a good idea, because if you do play something like queen e6, I assume the idea here for white is to play the move knight f3, and the rook supports the knight. So that is one idea Hikaru was looking for. However, now, after this move, rook a3, black takes on e2. Great move, because after king takes e2 you may consider giving checks but also the move queen to g1 is a great idea if you are want to do something about the bishop because black is threatening to take it let's say you go rook c3 well there is queen takes d4 and black starts picking up all these pawns and it takes a long time before white is able to coordinate its um its forces so instead white played here the move knight b3 to defend the, with the knight the bishop on c1 but the rook on a3 is now cut off, unable to support any interaction along the third rank. And with the move queen g2, black starts giving a bunch of checks. King to d1, queen f3 check, king to c2. Imagine if white gets the chance to walk away to a2, the king will be safe. Therefore, queen e4, that is the way to go. The king can't escape now. King to c3, queen f3, check. King got to go back. And here you see that there's nothing better than a repetition of moves. So on move 40, the players agreed to a draw. Once again, a big theoretical discussion in very important part of um, Jan Nepomnici's his repertoire, the Petrov defense. And once again, 
he was uh, probably uh, worse at some point. If Hikaru would have remembered his opening uh, lines better, he could have posed some uh, serious questions um, to Jan Nepomnici. But it didn't happen. And Nepo, very relieved once again with his draw, he is still one point ahead of uh, Hikaru Nakamura. Of course, there are still games in progress and his uh, co-leader before the round, uh, Gukesh, is uh, still uh, playing his game against Firusha. So, depending on that result, we will see how um, Nepal will be uh, doing in the standings going into the second rest day of the tournament. We are halfway the event. Jan de Pomici, four and a half out of seven. Hikaru Nakamura, three and a half out of seven with the second part of the tournament resuming. Um, on um, on Saturday, we can definitely uh, expect more exciting games to uh, to come. But chances still for both players, and there's also still a chance for you to subscribe to the channel, give it a like, share this video among your friends, and make sure to follow the um, the exciting second part of the uh, candidates tournament in Toronto. Thanks for doing that. See you soon again. Bye bye.